Ms. Legalista here, AKA Attorney Sheila. Welcome. In this video, I am going to be talking about a client who got hired for a job, but it really wasn't a job. So we're going to be talking about some job scams. Yeah. Thank you for joining. You know, they talk about the unemployment rate being really low. And there's a lot of data out there about who's getting jobs, who's not getting jobs. They break it all down into different demographic groups, age, race, all of those sorts of things. People who are looking for jobs, people who have given up, people who are taking part-time jobs when they prefer full-time jobs. How about people who take jobs that aren't really jobs. Is there any place in that data where that information is captured? All of the job scams that people go through before they get to the real job. I want to talk about one client that I had a conversation with job scams. You guys, it's nice to hear from a headhunter, someone who's gone on to LinkedIn. They've looked at your online resume and they're saying, hey, we think you might be a good fit, actually a great fit at a particular company. We're headhunters. Here's our website. Here's my contact information. That's great. Awesome. They say, send us your resume. But what happens when they say, hey, we found this great job for you. They're reaching out for you a couple of ways. One, via text message and the other via Facebook Messenger. Now, this most recent client that I want to talk about had someone reach out to him via text message. Now, come on, you guys, we're all using text messaging now. I send text messages back and forth to clients. It's just so much easier sometimes. And then eventually we move things over to email where we can actually send attachments and add in Zoom meetings and all of those other functions that we need in order for us to have a really good professional relationship. But what happens when you get that text message from a company that wants to offer you a job and pay you a good salary? This particular client thought he had hit the jackpot. This company reached out to him via text message told him what the job was about. He followed up, sent them all of his information. Now, come on, let's think about this for a second. What kind of information do you have to provide once you have accepted the job? Because they have to verify identity, right? How are you going to get paid? They need to be able to report taxes. So a lot of times you have to give them your name, your birth date, your address, and guess what? your social security number. That's when you can possibly become a victim of identity theft. Yes, through a job scam. So this is what happened to my client. Thankfully, his did not go the identity theft route. The route that it went was, here's the job, but we're not going to pay you. So yes, he got hired to do the work. He did the work. But then when it came time for him to get paid, those people were nowhere to be found. They were long gone. He couldn't get up with them. They did not respond. And it was just as if they had vanished into thin air. So that great job that he thought he had was nothing. And it was really hard for him to even follow up and report this particular company. Let me go to report fraud FTC gov because that's where you want to go when you run into these issues with fraudulent companies okay fraudulent companies here's where you go if you want to report them now they've got a whole website here where you can report all different kinds of fraud and scams now this what i'm talking about this job scam is just one of many that are out there and you can imagine that this particular site, which is operated by the Federal Trade Commission, gets a ton, a ton of activity. So it takes them a while to follow up on every single complaint. And then depending on the kind of information that you're able to give them and the investigation that they're able to engage in, they might or might not be able to find the party who was responsible for engaging in this fraud. And you may or may not get your money back. 
Okay, sometimes that happens, but this is where you want to go, reportfraud.ftc.gov. Now, back in your own state, you also have some options. Say this was actually a legitimate company and they just did not pay you. They were engaging in wage theft, okay? Wage theft. That's a scam too. We're just going to make you do the work and we're never going to pay you. Well, you can typically report that to your state department of labor. Most states have a wage in our division or office, whatever they call it, division or office, something like that. But usually it's their wage in our office and you can contact them, file a complaint with them online, and then they will follow up on it. Now, there are some states that do not have departments of labor that follow through as thoroughly as others. Sometimes you actually have to go to the U.S. Department of Labor to be able to file some of those complaints. But yes, start at the state level, then go to the federal level. So back to this guy <laughs> that I was talking about. So we had to have a conversation about a couple of things because it looked like he was probably not going to get that money back. That other, oh, my apologies. That other person, that other company was long since gone. So I hate to tell you that now, even when you're just applying for jobs, that even that can be an opportunity for scam artists, scammers, fraudsters to get a hold of your identification and use that to open new accounts, to purchase things in your name, to engage in identity theft. And it's also this opportunity for them to hire you, quote, hire you, and then not pay you and just up and disappear. Now, I know sometimes you're thinking, okay, so what do I have to do to protect myself from this? Well, first of all, really research the company. Go online, look at their website, follow through. If they have employees listed, follow up with them. Check them out on LinkedIn and see if they actually exist. Check in with the Better Business Bureau to see if there are any complaints. If the company is an LLC or a corporation, then check in with the state with your secretary of state's office or your corporation's department in your state and find out who is the person who is running this company. Like do some background research. And I hate to say that this is where we are now, but this is where we are now. If it's not a legitimate company that one, you have heard of and that you know it exists for real. Number two, you don't know somebody who works there, then yes, you are now going to have to double down on this research when somebody contacts you and says, hey, I've got the job for you. Don't believe it. Check it out. Don't believe it. Just remember, I told you so. That's it. I'm done. If this information has been helpful to you, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Peace.